What's up, YouTube? Welcome to this new video. Uh, so I'm getting more and more requests to do videos in English. So it's not that I don't want to. It's really that I just got into the habit of doing a lot of in French. Um, and I just need to get back into doing more videos in English. So what I'm going to try and do now is, unless I have specific requests, I'm going to try and get uh, all my thoughts of the day in both French and English. And that should cover it. Um, for this one, we're talking DFA Alpha 1. Um, Mr. Newman, I believe, uh, in the comments asked me about what my thoughts were on DFA Alpha 1. So essentially, uh, I stopped using it a little while ago. Uh, and maybe for those who don't know what it is, I'll give a bit of context. DFA Alpha 1 is a heart rate variability parameter It's a pretty complicated one, so to speak, just because of how it's calculated. Um, and it's as, you know, as HRV does, it's uh, an indication of your autonomic balance between parasympathetic and sympathetic. And there were some really interesting and promising papers uh, last from last year, I believe. Um, Bruce Rogers was one of the main contributors. If I'm not mistaken, I had a chance to get him on my podcast. If you want to go and uh, if you want to go and listen to that, um, showing that you could use DFA Alpha One, or that it was certain values of DFA Alpha One were strongly correlated with ventilatory threshold one, and a little bit less to, to slightly lesser extent uh, ventilatory threshold two. And given that all you need is a good heart rate monitor, uh, the Polar H10 is usually the one that's recommended given its quality of, uh, of measurements because you need precise RR intervals if you want to be, uh, if you want to calculate that DFA alpha one properly. Um, another thing was that it's, uh, it holds up really nicely on the bike and it's a little bit harder to get on, uh, in running usually. Um, so anyway, it's, it's a really, it, it was a really, in my mind, promising uh, metric that could then be used to, est even if it was to approximate thresholds, uh, which in the field is always extremely valuable, let's say. Um, then I got in touch with someone on Twitter who was doing a, who, who had a, an app that he was developing to see DFA Alpha 1 in real time. Uh, the trick was that on iOS, there was no way of really seeing it in real time. It was all uh, post-training analysis kind of situation, if you wanted your DFA Alpha 1. Uh, and th so there was this app uh, in uh, beta testing, and I was able to get on the, the beta testing group uh, an app called um, Alpha 1. I believe that was the name of it. Uh, very nice, very nice app, very well put together. Uh, the data was clean coming out. And so I was doing a ride one day at whatever I was at 140 or 150 watts, which is moderate intensity for me under my first threshold. And I was looking at the signal, the DFL alpha one in real time. And then I thought, hey, what happens if I start modulating my breathing, which we can consciously do as human beings during uh, an effort and at least as far as I believe and understand can have a positive impact on our performance uh, through optimizing the way that we breathe during a, an effort. And so I was breathing quite slowly, which I usually do at low intensities. And my DFA was, what was it? It was probably above 1.2, so it was very, very high. And then all of a sudden I thought, hey, let's, uh, let's hyperventilate just for a couple minutes. So I just started breathing, I think it was 30 breaths a minute. And my signal went down, down to 0.6, I believe. And I was like, whoa, almost like instantaneously, which in a way isn't surprising given that we know the link between respiration or breathing and um, I should say ventilation and uh, the autonomic nervous system and the impact that breathing can have on uh, our nervous system, which is uh, one of the wonders of breathing and breath work is that 
you can actually modulate your autonomic status, if you want to call it that. Um, but anyway, the signal goes way down, and then I start hypoventilating again, and then the signal goes way up. And I do it again a little bit later, and I, I made a video showing the data on that. If you want to see those uh, those graphs, I can I can pull them up and do and do a little review in English as well. Um, but essentially, heart rate stays pretty much where it was, and I believe I had the moxie on as well, so SMO two stays. And I forget if I had, I believe I had the VO two master on, so I'll have a uh, ventilatory data. So regarding the frequency and 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 depth of of breathing, so we can cross reference all this. And um, then I did it again a little bit later, and I was able to get the signal below 0.5, which is supposed to be severe intensity domain. Um, but I was still at 140 watts the whole time. I didn't move. I didn't budge from 140. So what that tells me is that as much as DFA alpha one is a measure of your autonomic balance, so to speak, it's also uh, highly influenced by how you breathe. And I don't buy the argument of, oh, people are just gonna, we, people have to just not think about how they're breathing when they're, when they're training or trying to perform. Uh, I believe that's nonsense because of how much, breathing can have a positive impact because of the impact that breathing can have on our performance. We ought to control our breathing in ways that are going to optimize for that. And as such, we're never going to get a clean DFA alpha one signal because we're going to be breathing in a certain way. Um, yeah. So I, 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 I did use it before on my, on the testing that I did and for some people, it did line up with threshold one. So you saw that mental Tory increase and uh, it matched with the DFA signal going down. But then again, some people um, like myself, I'm able to delay my, uh, I'm able to delay when I start breathing more heavily, uh, probably 50 watts above my first threshold. And so for me, that DFA doesn't mean anything or show anything uh, valuable. Uh, so that's the reason why I stopped using it. That doesn't mean that I don't think that it's still an interesting metric and that it can't be used. I think it can certainly still be used, uh, but we have to consider that breathing is gonna have such a huge influence on the signal. Uh, we just have to bake that into our, our hypotheses and, and whatever we're trying to do with it because we cannot unlink breathing and the autonomic nervous system. Those things are just coupled and they are going to respond or the autonomic status is going to respond uh, to how we breathe. And so we just have to be conscious of that and take that into our, uh, take that into our testing and whatever else we want to do with that DFA alpha one. Um, so voila, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if there's other topics you want me to, tackle in English while I'm here. And uh, as usual, give me a little like if you appreciate the content. Make sure you're subscribed because it's free and you can always change your mind. And uh, I'll talk to you in the next video. Take care.